In this video, I'll demonstrate how Palantir can be used to analyze individual mortgage loans, the higher order structures they collateralize, and the institutions that hold tranches of those higher order structures. Let's begin by opening the Palantir workspace and looking at all the mortgage loans we have in our data set. The data in this demonstration is a mix of real life data obtained from commercial data providers and notional data we created for demo purposes. Each object on the graph represents a particular loan. Let's look at this one. From the dossier, I can see the FICO score this homeowner had when he took out the loan, the current loan to value ratio, and the other particulars of the mortgage. For example, I can see that this mortgage does not have balloon payments, it's not an interest only loan, and the rate resets every six months. Using this structured data, I can ask questions about all the mortgages I have in my data set. Let's return to the graph. Using the histogram, I can see that I have a mix of commercial and residential mortgages. Let's isolate the mortgages that are likely to default in the near future. We'll choose mortgages that have balloon payments, mortgages given to people that have gone bankrupt, and mortgage loans that had low introductory teaser rates. Now that we've isolated these mortgages, we can view their distribution geospatially on the map. It's clear from the map that these likely to default mortgages are clustered. Let's look at the mortgages in the Bay Area. Selecting them, and then using the histogram, I can see that Bay Area mortgages likely to default are primarily residential. Of these residential mortgages, all have balloon payments. At this point, we've used Palantir to answer the question, how are likely to default mortgages distributed across the United States, and what do the ones in the Bay Area have in common? Let's step back and ask another question. Now let's ask the question, which financial institutions will be affected by rising default rates near Los Angeles? Using the map, I can query all mortgages in a particular area. In this case, near Los Angeles. Let's bring these to the graph and analyze where their cash flows go. I can quickly see in the histogram that the majority of these loans are residential. Let's separate the commercial from the residential mortgages on the graph. First, I'd like to understand the entity that originated and then sold these mortgages. I'll do this just for the commercial mortgages. In the search around panel, I'll query for all entities that sold the mortgages. On the graph, I can see that CIBC originated and then sold five of the mortgages, while JP Morgan Commercial Bank originated and sold the other one. Commonalities like this may be important when trying to understand fraud that took place at the origination level, since each seller is likely to have used the same tricks for many of the mortgages they sold. But let's step back and look for the structures that are collateralized by these loans. There are two structures collateralized by this set of mortgages. A commercial mortgage-backed security created by JP Morgan and a residential mortgage-backed security created by Bear Stearns. Let's take a closer look at the structure created by Bear Stearns. From the dossier, I can quickly pull up the actual prospectus given to investors in this mortgage-backed security. I can also see all the other mortgages that collateralize it, 
as well as the lead manager and trustee. Now that we have isolated and identified these two structures, we can query to find the tranches that they've issued and sold to investors. Using the histogram, we can quickly see how each tranche was rated by each of the major rating agencies, as well as select them based on rating. The most important question, however, is which banks own these tranches? Again, I can query to find the answer to this question. I can clearly see that Citi holds three tranches of the Bear Stearns mortgage-backed security pool. Selecting these tranches, I can see that all three are not rated, so they will likely be affected by the rising default rates. At this point, we have uncovered that Citi has exposure to rising default rates in the Los Angeles area, as do some other banks. We've traced the cash flows all the way from the mortgages that individual homeowners are making through the securitized mortgage-backed securities to the tranches and up to the financial institutions. One detail a regulatory agency may be interested in is whether or not any credit default swaps have been written on these tranches. If there were, then rising default rates could trigger a large wealth transfer. Let's search around to find out. Now we can see three CDS contracts, credit default swap contracts, were written on one tranche of the JP Morgan commercial, commercial mortgage-backed security. Each of these entities on the graph represent a CDS contract. We can use Palantir to find out who bought protection and who sold protection. From the graph, I can clearly see that a CDO, or a collateralized debt obligation, has sold protection to three major banks, Goldman Sachs, Lehman Brothers, and Morgan Stanley. Using Palantir, we have identified the other major stakeholders that have exposure to these Los Angeles-based mortgages. To recap, we have identified the geospatial distribution of mortgages that are likely to default, the major financial institutions that have exposure to rising default rates in the Los Angeles area, and the other stakeholders that will make or receive payments based on whether or not defaults occur. Thank you for watching this demonstration.